Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu, and I am here finally for Double Zeta Gundam episode 23. It has been a while since I last watched the last episode of Double Zeta Gundam, and for that I apologize. But I went back and refreshed myself, my, myself, all, all of the selves, on the events of last episode, and was once again reminded just how much shit happens in an episode of Double Zeta. It wasn't even like a really dense episode of Double Zeta. It was kind of just like a pretty light one, honestly. And it was still uh, jam freaking packed with stuff. So let's see if I can get it all. Judo started to head out to uh, go to the flagship of Haman Karn and was convinced that it would be a good idea to carry a bunch of strings with a bunch of giant bombs with him by Mondo and Bicha, who were just mildly betraying him and trying to get him killed. Just a little bit. Just like a little bit. Eno got wrangled up in some of the cable wires, which should have severed him in... But didn't, thank goodness, because I kind of like Eno. And they got entangled into much more shit as Haman Karn opened her doors to them fully and then began to face-to-face -face with Judo, try to seduce new type seduction vibe by him? Hypnotize him. Tried to hypnotize him and do a full Luke, we could rule the universe as a uh, uh, hot mommy and, and little baby boy. And uh, he said, wait a second, I'm here for my sister. This is weird and I feel strange and I think I need an adult. To which Haman Karn says, I am an adult. To which Judo says, okay, bye. And uh, we pieced the fuck out of there and made it out by the skin of our teeth with some help from Eno and the Double Zeta. Faced off with Rakan Takaran, the coolest name that we've had since the general dude in the first season of, of uh, uh, OG Amuro Gundam. And he's a, he's a beast. Like, actually, he's like a beast of a man is sort of the idea that we're getting with him. And I kind of love it. He's a cool champion for Haman Karn, who's so cool, calm, collected. It's good to have one of those, like, crazy brutes to offset it. It's cool, but he's also seemingly intelligent and tactical and dangerous. And that's all a good set of things to have in a sort of potentially rivaly type of character. I'm not getting Jared vibes, I don't know what kind of vibes I'm getting yet. I'm getting Rakan Dakaran vibes, and it's a whole new, it's a whole new set, whole new set of vibrations, you know. So I think I did a pretty good job of spieling through it. Lena's still in the clutches of Goofy McGooferson, um, and uh, Judo's still desperate to try to get her, get his damn sister back. Everything else keeps chugging along, and oh yeah, Haman Karn made a giant holographic announcement to the peoples of Earth that. Neo Zeon is rising and they should all watch the fuck out or join us. Um, cool. So the, the big overarching politics are moving. And then all the little stuff is also moving intricately and all the little clockwork gears and mechanisms are turning and clicking and clacking and beep, pop, beep, boop, 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 beep. It's like watching a giant clock and all the little intricate gear work and then the big gears are turning too. It's cool. It's cool. The show is cool. I'm glad to be back to it. I'm excited to watch the next episode. So let's do it. I've got episode 23 of ZZ up and ready to go. I'm going to blow my nose. Otherwise, we will beep beep timer right into it. Okay, episode 23. Ep so first off, I feel quite lightheaded because I'm getting more, whoa, more oxygen as I'm trying to breathe. <laughs> what the fuck? This is wild. Well, blowing my nose just changed something in my sinuses maybe with my soft palate, and I feel wild, but I'm just gonna push through it. And so I'm sorry if my voice sounds really weird. It feels like I'm having trouble or maybe have opened the ability to put pressure through my nose or my mouth. It's very strange. I don't know. I'm gonna watch some Gundam. We're gonna watch the Gundam. We'll bear with whatever the fuck is going on with my voice, because, God, it's been so long, and I just want to watch an episode. So, episode 23 of Mobile Suit Double... No, wait, no. Yes, 23 of Mobile Suit Double Zeta Gundam. Beep, beep timer.
Sorry, something really went weird. I missed this. Okay, so now I expect a wild, weird circumstance conflagration of insane events aboard ship. <laughs> yes, you were. You got a son in there, huh? <laughs> yeah, she did. How could she? <laughs> what? What is that title? Maybe it's metaphorical. Maybe it's their view that the current Earthlings are burning Earth up. What the fuck? Is she new type vibing with Judo? Nope. Judo Nissan? Yikes. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a problem. This is whack! <sighs> Whose voice is that? Is that Glemmy Toto? It sounds like it could be. Whoa. <clears throat> Just horrifying. This is the enemy. Oh, the silence is so tense. So this is how they do it, huh? Ah, oh, mega fucked up. It is with Glammy, huh? Maybe you should... Maybe you should finish the pro... Okay. No fucking rest. Holy shit! What?! Oh, man, Lena's a, a clever little spy, ain't ya? Ain't ya? <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. Fucking Glemmy Toto, and what a, what a face turn, like. Yeah, treat her like shit, I don't give a fuck about her. Hi, Lena, wow, you're so cute. Uh, what a, what a. What a tone to set at the beginning of the episode. Big shift. Not what I would expect at all. Yeah, y'all suck. <laughs> yeah, you thinking serious stuff? Oh, we were thinking that all y'all's war sucks. <laughs> uh. No. Ah, we don't care. Hmm. 
more contemplative. Keep those who've never left from defiling. Fair enough. You want to leave? Go to Earth? Yeah, you keep blowing shit up. I'd love to have you gone. Whoa. We're trying to dad you right now. Whoa, he is trying to dad him. Oh, damn. Hmm. Oh, and in front of the gold. This is, this is cool. <laughs> Just calling out a character's archetype, huh? Oh, this is interesting. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. So we get kind of an overview of different sides and viewpoints, and a lot of it's focused on who Judo is and where he's going from here. Intense. Are we bringing LPO Ple on board? I think that's what we said we would do. Hello. How's she doing? Wah. <laughs> Full gear. L people. Well, she seems stable enough to have done what we needed. Those are... Hmm, dude, the... <laughs> That's a weird thing to say, Haman. The darkness created by her crown is amazing. You're going to be introduced as her aide? Yo, Glemmy moving up. Glemmy being manipulated. <laughs> Glemmy thinks he's moving up. <laughs> what? Dakar again? That makes sense. Homies at Karaba? Twist. Of course she has. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bad time? Just straight up, we're going to go attack? We're back to that again? Oh, man. That was brutal the first time. Okay. Can't keep making excuses. Gotta go get her. Yeah, thanks, Haru. I'm I'm good. Put clock. Oh, he's swapping. You get a better. You get a better ride. You get to ride the double Zeta. Wait, the the Zeta is faster than the double. 
Okay, everybody's going along with it. Feels like we're building to actually maybe saving Lena. <clears throat> Whee! So, this is really familiar. We're gonna be shooting parachutes as we drop out. Oh, is she gonna be fighting? Oh, I must kill. Maybe you should have let her finish the... Maybe you should have let her finish the rest. My enemy. That doesn't seem very convincing. Oh, <laughs> you think that worked well? Suddenly, Glummy Toto in charge. Yeah! <laughs> this guy... Are you, are you suddenly a JoJo's character? Just <laughs> flying out? Honestly reminds me of Dio in part 5. Part 6. Just f flying out of there. Bam. Yo, that is a beefy... <laughs> that piano teacher lifts. This is a really different episode so far. All that contemplative stuff in the beginning is really interesting, and now we get to the second half, and I don't know where we're going. Down. <laughs> we're going down. Are you more conniving than I expected? Wow, and he's in red, too. It is really familiar. Sink the Argama, the rest of us drop. Holy macaroni. Oh my god. Total blank. And the positioning too, the pose. Hi. Duel me! You're in the wrong suit, too. I told you not to. He doesn't know, man. Ah, oh, jeez. And you're in the wrong suit. This is bad. Always pushing the new types. Bro! Whoa! You are a jerk! Hmm? Hmm! If you're not going, I'll go. Somebody's got to do it. Let's go. Is mine? Fucking fuck you. Fuck you, Bija. We need our own hypnotherapy for Bija. <laughs> With... With add-ons. Zoom. Sweet. Gonna get a chance. First time! I feel like that's the first time he's announced it. He's got some weird- something weird and boxy about it. Is that normal? Ugh. All right, all right, we'll, we'll stop holding it against him so much. This is bad. Yes, you're my enemy. Fuck. So this will be confusing, yeah. Ugh. 
should have gone, yes, it's me, Ruruka, it's me. It's me, you're so handsome. I don't think so. They're taking the full-size ships into into orbit? Whoa! Whoa, what was that? Whoa, what was that? Did you uh, the That was awesome. Let's go, Lena. Send out those brain waves. Mother truckers. Was it the LPO plu inside LPO plu going, brother? <sighs> Preparing for entry, huh? <sighs> Retract all the spiky bits. Mm hmm. So it's working. He's proven himself. Full size ships, too. Wow, this is awesome. <laughs> Not going to be able to cut them off. Dealing with that, that was a lot of missiles. <sighs> Teamwork. You'll love to see it. Yeah, this is worth it. <sighs> oh my god, can we just let Ruruga pilot the main thing? I'm fine with this. This is hot. Go straight for her. Try to connect. Will it break through? Whoa. Ah, memories. Man, we're gonna tear this little girl's fucking brain apart. Fuck. Your judo ashed up, my enemy. Fuck. Ah! Nope. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> well, fuck. Yeah, let's go kill Glemmy Toto. No, go kill him. Oh my god. Oh! Guys! No, no, let him save her. Oh, shit. She's just gonna fall to Earth. A half-imprinted new type just gonna land. Survive it if you're lucky. Rip. Sorry. Uh, you're gonna burn up, bro. She's gonna burn up. She's not gonna survive.
Use his shield. Make it built that way. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Sick. Can we can we land in a in a desert somewhere and have a an adventure with Elpio Plu on on uh, uh on Doran's island or whatever? So everybody's making it to Earth. <sighs> Did you have countermeasures for that? <gasps> good, they do. Not going to literally explode. Good, 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 good. Well, we are fully changing our environment, huh? Balut's out, and we're heading in. Maximum G-forces. And we'll save LPO Plu, who is half-imprinted. As through fire we see the Earth for the first time. So sick. What a cool episode construction. Wow. And an awesome scene. We're going to cut it. Wild. Uh, what a what a dramatically different structure to an episode than what I expected. I came in and I said it as it was happening. I was like, okay, we're going to turn our attention to the Argama and it's going to be a chaotic circumstance of insane events. Not at all. Not at all. Everything, all the big gears are moving, right? So everything is not chaos. And instead, it's really direct and contemplative and thoughtful. What an interesting, what an interesting way to move us in and, and open the episode. So, so we open here, and we're all all silent. Well, we okay. So, so intro from Judo is goofy, and then silence. The burning earth, which is metaphorical, but maybe has to do with the idea of like the 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 earthnoids who are on there who are burning it. But maybe it just has to do with burning as they uh, enter orbit. Through an aurora, which immediately ties us into new typeness and infinities, in a floating, empty scape, it's Glemmy Toto's voice and alone Elpio Plu in a dream state being hypnotized. And really, this is pretty close to the first time that we've really seen this. You know, we opened the thing on four. We've seen characters go through this this tension and insanity while they're fighting or while they're already hypnotized or whatever, but actually seeing it being imprinted, this is tough and torturous as she screams and these, these diametrically opposed concepts try to root themselves in her brain. It's really cool, and it sets the tone for the episode in a totally different way than all of our, all of our other intros. You know, all, so many of our other intros are like... We're having a, an insane, everything's going crazy, and there are chickens everywhere, and we're food fighting, and, and uh, Mondo and Beach are doing something insane, and none of that's here. It's all just, this is your world. You're getting destroyed over and over by the Double Zeta. Judo is not your brother. He's attacking you, and she's being tortured and screaming and just attacked and destroyed by this. We cut out of there to the screams, and Lena overhears and listens in. And Glemmy doesn't give a fuck about her. A tool, an object, and not even one that he treats well, you know? It's like, at the very least, if you're going to hypnotize people and turn them into soldiers, maybe you should let them have the rest that they need so that they're effective soldiers and your imprinting can't be worn off by just having the dude who you've told is her enemy say, how about a parfait? And she's like, Bleh! and goes full brain melt. This is rough. As we, when we open this door, we revive her immediately and the doctor tries to, to avoid it. But we open this door and she's just full face down on the floor and Glemmy's just like, later I'm out. That's rough, man. 
time for me to peace out. And he slowly he clo closes the the view so she can't see. Of course, Lena has been more actively gathering information than we've been shown. I think she's a smart girl. Um, she was the strategist of our squad before she got captured. But what we're indicating is that Glemmy's a little bit more conniving than the idiot that we've seen him be, because he's an idiot. At least in our first half of Goofy Times, we played him out as such. And he'll, he'll still be played out as such all over the place, but we're seeing a really conniving, sinister side to him, and it's pretty interesting. Hey, what's wrong with that girl? Just anemic, you know? Wow. Wow. So these guys don't want to fight. Got no reason to. And then we continue our contemplation as Bright is like reckoning with his own position in this and wondering whether he's being resented for this. It all sort of comes to a head as we're changing the changing the direction of the show. Beecha joining up and stopping his his sort of insanity feels like a part of that arriving on earth feels like a part of that face to face with Haman Karn feels like a part of that it all feels like bits and pieces are shifting and so a shift in the landscape of how our characters think about each other is sort of what we get to demonstrate here as bright is considering judo and considering all of these kids and considering sort of passing the torch to them i think we get this sequence as he's curious about this and he's questioning and the kids are all the ones. It's Rue passing by going, don't worry so much. It's fine. He's He's got it. And what we end up doing is having each of these characters express how they think about Judo, right? Because we can't really see Judo because he's our character and he can't really see himself because he's himself and bright can't really see him because he's too disconnected in terms of generations but the friends right around him they see judo and they feel something about him and what they feel puts into words maybe what we haven't been able to he feel he's the type who feels like he has to bear everyone's burdens a heroic archetype he's sincere but he can, can he ha can he hack it can he handle it doesn't matter. He'll get that there's no choice. We really just like, we lay it out there. He's laid back, but not stupid. He sees things to the end. Maybe he'll settle down once he actually saves Lena. Stop worrying so much. But all of this really folds in for us. As we're watching this, this is a, a shift to the viewpoint on Judo from being this kind of, you know, he's, a, he's just kind of a goofball. He's sort of lazy, sort of laid back, sort of all these things. It's like, yeah, 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 but hold up. There is a spark of heroism in this character, and all these people who are organized around him know it, and they see it, and it gives us a... Suddenly it crystallizes a little bit, like, click. Huh. And that's, that's most of it. That's most of the introduction. There's a little moment of meeting between Haman Karn as she looks down upon... Uh, on El People. If you thought... I, I didn't understand... I was afraid you wouldn't arrive. I've weakened Axis's defenses accordingly. So you thought I would take advantage of that myself by taking over Axis's defenses for myself. Oh! So by leaving Axis, I've left a power vacuum. I kind of thought you might have taken it up. The defense of our, our home base. And he says, oh, I would never. I would never take advantage of that. You've overestimated me. I'm concerned, but it can be rebuilt. After all, and there's only one of you. You can't be rebuilt. And she says the wildest line. How do you know that? What? Isn't it in every way in your interest, Salman Khan, to go full Cleopatra and be like, yeah, I'm divine and divinely inspired queen bitch. Ain't no more of me. What a weird thing to say. One can't be too careful. I will remain by your side, and I'll introduce you as my aide. He is very honored. It's all working, but she's suspicious. Manage his bodyguards carefully. And that's all she says, and it reads to us, in part because of this wonderful aspect of Haman's full regalia character design, is that the, the helm as like full Spartan style, right? 
uh, as it is, the helm produces this like really distinct shadow over her eyes. It's peaked, right? So it gives us that whole widow's peak impression, predatory, sharp and beaky, but it's also it shades over her eyes just right. Oh, it makes her so fucking scary sexy. And I, mm, mm, it's a lot. We're going back to the car, baby. I really liked uh, the cut of somebody just dropping dejectedly into the chair. Oh, very, very sad. And then we're going to move on forward as we sort of, bam, sound the alarms, rush into battle. And it's uh, an intended conscious mission that we're going on, which is kind of weird. It, it's like we're not forced into something or suddenly caught off guard by something absurd or judo takes his his own initiative to go off and do something weird we're all on the same page and again it's that sort of crystallization it feels like everybody's on the same page except mondo and bicha and then that clicks in as well it's like forced to by the rest of everything turning into the 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 shape that it's supposed to be gonna find lena gonna destroy their balutes and he says if i keep making excuses like that i'll never be able to rescue her so he's now willing to take the hardest road if it leads to what he needs got your back lovely Haro, roo, and then we take the zeta and give the double to ruruka which i think is a really good thing and she seems really upset about it even though I think it should be really pleasing because she gets to be super duper badass. And we do get a sequence for being super duper Omega badass and I love it. Woof, time to fight, I guess. Can you do it? I must. What is Judo Ashta to you? <laughs> My enemy. Yeah, you seem fine. You seem fine. Go out there. No problem. You stupid? You stupid, Mr. Toto? I do like how his... Exp Tell me! Answer me! My enemy. Okay, go. And then we turn, and and he turns in this this crazy whippy whoosh. <laughs> Suddenly, Glummy Toto is the most posed character, and he's just full. Uh, this guy is having none of it. I love him. This is straight up the exact frame or form that Dio just disappears into darkness in, and I I'm really into it. It's kind of crazy. He's just like ready to get sucked out into space. Woof. <laughs> wild and then suddenly we're off 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 and we get to turn our attention over to Haman Karn's tilted ship which will lead us into um the most interesting cut to me in the episode but it's four minutes away my position will be in danger she begins to suspect me so the she just begins to suspect that you're power hungry but that's just useful, man. It's just useful. It just means she knows she can dang dangle carrots in front of you and make you jump around like an idiot. You're fine. I think this shot, just this frame, the way the little lights are on the face, the dead, cold eyes. Oh, very cool. Very rough. And blam, blam, come fight me. And away they go. Okay, bits and stuff. Stuff gets crazy. Glemmy Toto is on board as well. And we have this conversation with Beecha where he lays it out and then eventually decides that he'll do it because someone else would do it in his place. And he's did a shitty set of reasons, man. I'd really like for him to have a better set of reasons and stop being such a, what does he call him? What does he call him? An unruly punk. You're one son of a brat. Ah. <sighs> On the other side of things, Ruruka gets the fucking coolest shit. She gets to blow so much stuff up. And they, they really put some of the animation budget on her, and I really, 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 really like it. Hey, are you Ruruka? Yes. The answer is always yes. Okay. Tilted ship. So as we descend, the ship is tilted. Tilted, 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 tilted. Mobile suit, no. Mobile armor approaching. What? And we go from here, and it... Oh, we just rotate the whole frame. That's really what we do? We just rotate the whole frame and we're gonna, is it a hard cut to, whoa, and, and similar rotation, whoa, so cool. So the rotation that happens inside turns into the rotation that happens outside, as, and, and we don't even have to, like, warp it, or, or, like, blur it, or fade it, or anything, it's just cut, cut, and our eyes sync it together, just like a montage or a Kuleshov effect, but it's different. Oh, that's so fucking sick. Let me see you, let me see you. Whoa! That rocks! That's not even tough. That just rocks. 
Wow. It's so striking in the episode that it it actually just shocked me uh, uh, when it happened because it's such a dramatic shift to everything. And it signals really like this is where where we come into contact directly and suddenly it's war. I fucking love that. I fucking love what a Star Wars-y transition. What a cool piece of cool piece of camera work. And we keep doing it as we move through. Oh, that's baller. He hears a voice, but it's probably L. I don't know. I love all the bits of the ship sliding around to to allow them to re-enter. And the the actual visuals of the balutes expanding are so big and cool and full of detail. I really think this is awesome. My god, she kicks ass. I'm with you, Glemmy Toto. I'm with you. Ruruka deserves all the love. Look at this chick go. She's just like... Just dope. You guys head out. I got this. And she sure does. Show you what the double Zeta can really do. Indeed, man. Maybe she should just be the permanent pilot. So... We've seen this scene before, right? Before? Ha, ha, or, or with another little sister character? Ha ha ha. Oh. The whole cyber new type imprinting, making them... Why does it always end up being a character that they feel really strongly about that they're also imprinted to be their enemy? That seems just like a bad move. Can't help it. So, in total confused chaos, LPO Plu causes more confused chaos amongst the characters around her because Judo's like, that's right, I am your, your big brother, please don't shoot me, and she shoots him. Um, so, with a hole in his normal suit, Judo calls it, but she begins to plummet toward Earth from a misfired shot from Glemmy Toto. What a chaotic set of circumstances. And screaming for help from Judo begins to plummet. And so he dives in to save her. And we get one of the more intense sequences. Landing on his back. Life for both of us. Together. And uses her power bit things to sever the wings so that they don't both explode. And so we get this moment of like, through the fire and the flames, the earth opens up to us burning earth maybe that's what it means is that our first view of this landscape is through hellfire but it's gorgeous when we pull up through here and it'll be the first time that these characters arrive and they're all arriving both sides of this conflict at the same time like odst dropping in wild setup a huge shift to the way that everything feels from the outset of the episode and the way that it's structured. Wow. This was an incredible ride. Down to Earth indeed. What's next? I don't know. I don't know what can be next, but I'm excited to find out. We'll leave off here for today for Mobile Suit Double Z to Gundam. This was, this was awesome. That cut of spin and transition in the middle is... It's one of those circumstances where it's not even the most impressive thing or anything like that. It's just clever and well-executed and stunning. And I feel, I feel that way about a whole bunch of this episode. And nope, this is an episode where I don't come out of it going, I don't know what I just experienced, but it was cool. I do know what I just experienced, and it was cool. And, and it was well-defined enough that each of the layers was separated and I could taste it all. I, I'm impressed. I feel like, that, like we've hit a turning point. You know, I'm excited to see what's next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week for more Double Zeta. <laughs> Much love. Peace.